Hey, my name is Milan, and in today's video, we're going to talk about binary search, which is one of the most powerful searching algorithms out there. It has many practical use cases, and you're probably already using binary search without even being aware of it. Let me give you a practical example. I have a book here called Clean Architecture with .NET. It was written by Dino Esposito. And in general, I recommend that you check out this book. I think it's worth a read. Now, let's say I want to find some particular chapter. I'm going to open up the contents of the book. And on page, let me see, 200 something it was, uh, 219, there's a chapter called Microservices versus Modular Monoliths. And let's say I'm interested in finding this particular chapter. So let's say I open up the book somewhere around here in half and I check which page I'm currently on. So I'm on page 173 and I'm looking for page 219. Then what I can do is split the remainder of the book in half again and check which page I'm on, let's say 241, which leaves me with this little part of the book here that I can again split in half. Now I'm on page 199 and I'll continue splitting the contents of the book until I get to the page I'm interested in. And finally, I find the particular chapter I'm looking for, which is microservices versus modular monoliths. And this is how you can apply binary search in practice. You're probably doing something similar using your intuition, but let's open up the whiteboard and I'm going to explain how the binary search algorithm works. So the first thing that we are going to need is an array of values. So let me create a bracket and then I'm going to create a few boxes that are going to represent the individual elements of my array. So let's copy this a few times. Let's say we want to have seven elements in this array. And these are my seven elements. And then I'm going to draw the closing bracket. I added the boxes just as containers for my elements. And then for the actual values, I'm going to say 1, 3, 7, 11, 17, 29, and 30. By chance, these are mostly prime numbers, but this works with any kind of array. The one prerequisite before we can apply binary search is that the array has to be sorted. So all of the values have to be sorted in ascending order for binary search to be able to work. So if you remember from my practical example with a book and its content, I use the fact that the pages of a book are sorted in ascending order, just like we have here, to split the search space in half. And this is how binary search works. So let's say our array has the respective indices for each element. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And let's say that the element that we are looking for, represented by this question mark here, is 17. So 17 is on the index of 4. So let's say that we did a linear search for this array. We would have to check from the beginning of the array, and we would check this element, then this element, then this element, then this element, and finally we find the number 17. So we did one, two, three, four, five lookups into the array in order to find this element, which isn't too much. And in general, linear search is going to work very well when we have a small array. Now, how does binary search work? We need to create two pointers represented as low and high values. And these are going to be the starting point in our array and the last element, which is equal to the number of elements minus one. So our low index or pointer is going to have a value of zero and our high index or pointer is going to have a value of six. And then we need to calculate what is going to be the midpoint in our array by using these two values. This is actually simple. All we have to do is say low plus high, which is zero plus six then divide that by two. And keep in mind that we are doing integer division. So this is going to be six divided by two, which is equal to three. And this is going to be this index here. So we are working with indices. So this is our mid element. And then what we do is compare the value at this index to the value that we're looking for. So is 11 equal to 17? We can conclude that it's not. So what we can do from this point is eliminate all the values to the left of our mid index because they are lower than the value that we are looking for, which means we can eliminate half of the search space with just one iteration. Then what we have to do is to move our low index here to the point that is one element to the right of the midpoint. So the low index is now going to point here. So we will have a low value of four. And this is one iteration for the binary search algorithm. 
Then we're going to do our next step, which is again, adding these two values together. So four plus six, dividing that by two. And this is going to be 10 divided by two, which is five. So five is our new midpoint. So now we have to check this element and see if it's equal to 17. So let me also cross this out because we won't be looking at this value and our high and midpoint are between these elements. So we can conclude that our midpoint 29 is not equal to 17 and it's also greater than 17. And in this case, we can eliminate the right part of the array again halving the search space. In this situation, we have to move the high index to this position here. So our high index now becomes five. And we did our second iteration through the binary search algorithm. And now we have to calculate our midpoint again. So we do four plus five divided by two. Four plus five is nine and divided by two is actually four. And remember that we are doing integer division. So the index four is now our midpoint. So right here. And this is equal to the value that we are looking for. So we can conclude our binary search and return the index where we found the value. Now, what happens if the value isn't in the array? In that case, we are going to move one of our two values, either the low or the high index. And if the low index becomes greater than the high index, then we're going to conclude that we didn't find the element in the array and we can return something generic like minus one, which is typical when we are returning an index value in the array. So hopefully my explanation made some sense. Now let's see how we can convert this into code when we jump into Visual Studio. I'm starting from a blank Hello World application and let's start by defining an array of integers and let's, for example, use the same values as on the whiteboard. So I will say 1, 3, 7, 11, 17, 29, and 31. And then let's say that the number to find is equal to 17. If we wanted to do a linear search through this array, we could do something simple like this. Let's say linear search. We accept the array as the argument and the number to find as the second argument. And then what I can do is do a for loop through this array. And for each element, I can check if the array at this index is equal to the number to find, then I can just return the current index. Otherwise, I'm going to return minus one because we didn't find the element in the array. And if I try to apply this, let's say integer index is equal to calling linear search on these values. And let's say if the index is equal to minus one, then we're going to say console write line. And for example, couldn't find the number. Otherwise, we're going to say console write line found at index, and we can specify the index value. And if I go ahead and run this application quickly, you can see that we find this value at index four. So the linear search is working, but it's not the most efficient way to find a value in a sorted array. Now let's see what the binary search algorithm looks like. I'm going to create a binary search function and it's going to accept an array and the number that I want to find. I'm going to call it right away. And then in the implementation, here's what we have to do. We need a pointer. We need a value for the low pointer in the array, which is going to start at zero. Then I'm going to define the high value which is going to be the length of the array minus one. Now the next step is to calculate what is the midpoint of this array. And we're going to do this by saying low plus high and then divide that by two. Then what we have to do is to compare the value in the middle of this array to the number that we want to find. And if this value is equal, then this is great. We can finish our binary search and we're just going to return the middle value as the result of our binary search function. Now, if this isn't the case and we get past this if statement, then I need to check if the number that I'm looking for is less than the middle value. So I'm going to say number is less than array mid. And if this is the case, then I want to move the high pointer to a value that's equal to middle minus one. Otherwise, we have a value that is greater than the value that we are looking for. And in that case, we're going to move the low pointer to mid plus one. And if for some reason we don't manage to find the value, we're going to return minus one. Now, the important bit is that we have to run all of this inside of a loop. We can use a while loop, for example. And our condition is going to be that the low pointer is less than or equal to the high pointer. So let's debug this quickly to see if it's working as expected. So we're going to start with a low pointer of zero and a high pointer of six our middle value is going to be three in the first iteration. 
and we're going to compare this value to 17 and you will see that this is false so we're going to then move the low pointer in our array to its new value which is 4 and we're going to repeat the loop we're going to do the same calculate the middle index in the array which is now 5 compare this value to the number that we want to find and this returns false and this time we're going to update the high pointer to 4 so we're going to continue with our iteration the midpoint of our array is now 4 and this is equal to the value that we are looking for so we're going to complete our binary search and print that we found this value at index of 4. So you can see that binary search is relatively simple to implement but it does require a sorted array for this to make sense. So why is binary search so useful? And in order to explain this we have to talk about algorithm complexity. So linear search is going to become slower and slower as the number of elements that we have increases. Linear search has an algorithm complexity of big O of n which is this value here. Binary search on the other hand has an algorithm complexity of log n and you can see how this value doesn't increase as rapidly as the number of elements increases. If we compare them side by side, you can see how after a certain point, as the size of the array increases, binary search becomes significantly faster. And this is precisely why binary search is so valuable. So let's discuss some use cases for binary search. Binary search is useful when you want to find a value in a sorted array. This could be some sort of dictionary, it could be an integer array representing some scores. And if we want to find something in this array, the fact that it's sorted is very important, which means we can find the value faster using binary search. There are a number of data structures that make use of binary search, such as binary search trees and even B plus trees, which aren't technically binary trees because they don't exactly have one left and one right child like a true binary tree. However, B plus trees use the same conceptual algorithm. If you take a look at this node, all of the values to the left of this node are smaller than this value and all of the values to the right of this node are larger than this value. So this is why B plus trees are used as indexes in relational databases and how an index works is it keeps a sorted collection of the index values and this is going to typically be your primary key which is usually a self-incrementing integer value. And the beauty of this is that it's very efficient to find a particular value when the array is sorted. I believe the log 2 of 1 million is around 20, which means in the worst case scenario, you have to go through 20 iterations of the binary search algorithm to find some value in a sorted array of 1 million elements. Whereas with a linear search, in the worst case scenario, you have to go through all 1 million elements. So you can see how the binary search algorithm is much more efficient. But let's actually check out some benchmarks to see if there is some truth to this. So I prepared a benchmark project and we're going to compare the linear search algorithm to the binary search algorithm. So I'm going to create a function that's going to represent my one benchmark, which is going to be linear search. And here I'm just going to say array find index. I'm going to specify my static array containing numbers from one to one million. And then I'm going to provide a predicate that's going to represent a function for finding the number that I'm looking for. So this is going to be the number to find. And this value is going to be either 333,000 or 777,777. So let's wrap up the linear search benchmark. And then I'm going to copy this and let's use binary search as the second benchmark. So let's go ahead and compare these two implementations so that you can see how much binary search is faster when we have a large array containing 1 million elements. So here are the benchmark results comparing linear search to binary search and you can see that binary search is significantly faster even with just 1 million elements. So we have 16 nanoseconds for binary search compared to 129,000 nanoseconds for linear search. And the same applies when we are looking for the other value where linear search is even slower because it has to go through more of the array. Now let's compare the binary search that we implemented to the binary search that we have as part of the base class library. So I'm going to call this benchmark binary search BCL and I'm going to say array binary search and this is the built-in function that we have in .NET. I also want to make one more remark when it comes to our binary search implementation and that's how we calculate the middle index in the array. If you think about it, for a large enough array, adding together two integer values could cause an overflow. So a solution for this is slightly changing the calculation to be low plus high minus low divided by two. 
this is going to give us the same result while also preventing integer overflow issues. So let's go ahead and run our benchmarks and compare the two binary search implementations. So the results are in, and you can see that our implementation is slightly faster than the native one in .NET, and this is mainly because this has a few additional method calls, and it has to support generic binary search for any element whereas we are only working with integers. So this is why we are more efficient. Now, I want to show you one more thing that we can do with our binary search implementation to make it even faster. And let me show you what that change is going to be. I'm going to copy this binary search implementation that we have, and I'm going to call this binary search with a shift. So why I'm doing this is because there is a more efficient way to divide some value by two. And you can achieve this by doing a shift operator, which is going to shift the bits of an integer to the left or right. And when you do a right shift operation by one element, this is equal to dividing this by two. So let's see if this has a noticeable performance impact. So I'm going to create another benchmark. Let's call it the binary search shift function and let's name the benchmark accordingly and let's run the benchmark and observe the results. The results are in and if you are enjoying this video make sure to click the like button. Now let's take a look at what we have here. Our binary search using the shift operator is noticeably faster than our original binary search implementation and the same applies in our second example. So you can see how using a more efficient approach to divide something by two which was one part of a single line of code made a significant performance impact. So overall, this is the most efficient way to implement binary search. We're using the shift right operator to make the division by two more efficient. And then we have an iterative approach for the binary search algorithm. Now you could also implement this in a recursive way, but that's going to be less efficient because of additional method calls. If you are looking for another performance oriented video, then you should watch this video next. Click the subscribe button under this video to get notified when I release a new video. Check out my clean architecture and modular monolith courses to improve your skills. And until next time, stay awesome.